Well, the tension between Washington and Silicon Valley just took another huge turn in the fight for your privacy versus national security. In an open letter, Apple CEO Tim Cook telling customers the tech giant is opposing a federal judge's order to help the FBI break into the iPhone of San Bernardino shooter Syed Farouk, calling it, quote, an overreach by the U.S. government. Joining me now to weigh in, former FBI investigator William Daly. And Scott Vernick, head of the data security and privacy at Fox Rothschild. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Good to be here. here. Bill, I want to read you this quote. Uh, this is actually coming from Tim Cook. Tim Cook. He said, quote, the FBI wants the equivalent of a master key would undeniably create a back door. This is the crux, really, here of, of what Tim Cook is arguing. He says that while the government may argue that its use would be limited in this case, there is no way to guarantee such control. Bill, he doesn't trust the government, should we? Well, I think we should, and we are certainly trusting with our safety and security and investigating other aspects of terrorism. I think this is one aspect which is very key and has been key actually to the FBI, the FBI director, and the president even before San Bernardino. If I just take you quickly back is that the FBI director Comey has testified before Congress. They've actually gone out. Him and President Obama met with technology companies saying, let's work together and figure out a solution before we get into some kind of locking the horns over the legal issues surrounding whether or not you're going to help us. Yeah, but Scott, I mean, the, the, these companies, I mean, this is Silicon Valley companies saying to the government, we don't trust you to hand over data on our customers, our company, and we don't trust you to keep it safe because I'm sorry, but the U.S. The U.S. government doesn't really have a great security record, cyber security record anyway. Hey, the U.S. government doesn't have a good track record, track record here. I say, Tim Cook, good for you. I mean, this is a binary proposition, right? Either you have encryption on the iPhone or you don't. If you create a back door, you create a weakness. That weakness is not just good for the good guys, it's also good for the bad guys. You can't have it both ways here. I say to the government, use other data that you have, figure ways around it. but. Look, most of us have very personal data on our iPhones. We have personal financial information. We have health information. We have all kinds of things that we don't want people to see. Do you know what's happening here? The government is asking a private business to create software to help break encryption. Exactly. That's incredible. Yes. That's but, incredible. We Bill, should all be alarmed by that. I've only got about 30 seconds, Bill, but that's, the, that's what Apple is saying. They're like, look, look they, want, they want us to hand over our software and then they can keep it, meaning that the government could break into all kinds of iPhones. Well, actually, iPhone. actually, Cheryl, I don't believe that that's, that's particularly the case. And in this particular instance, they're just looking for Apple to figure out how to go and open up this phone to give them the information they need on, on Farouk and his wife and who they've been talking to. I also would say is that they've never asked for a backdoor. They've been asking for the technology companies to figure out a way. They're very smart people, obviously. They've created these wonderful devices we use. Figure yeah. out a way, smart people, that you can have multiple right. layers, a dual control, whatever it is. They're not looking for a backdoor. Door. They just want to know that in cases like this and others where maybe time is of the essence, they can get that information well, the, and get and to the, it quickly. The judge seems to side with the government right now. Guys, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate well, thank it. Thank you.